God is too wise to be mistaken. Mm -hmm. God is too good to be unkind. So when we don't understand and when we can't see his plan, when we can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Trust his heart. And his heart is love for us. Welcome to the Living Life Support. My name is Madeline Fenelon. And today I have the privilege to sit with a woman who has inspired me. I think when I move away from New York to law school in Kentucky, I met Galadriel. <laughs> and I love her character. She takes life serious. She's not passing through. She examined every situation of her life, and that inspired me. And I think it, she has a lot that people can learn from as she's pursuing life and what God has for her. Hi, Gilly Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I think I just said who you are, <laughs> but <laughs> I still want to ask you in your own words. Who do you say Gilly is? Well, I think I could say that I, I find my identity in Christ. And because of his mercy and love on my life, um, that um, he is the one that gives me meaning. And so when I think of who I am, I can't think of who I am apart from who God is in my life. And I love that I find my identity in Christ. What is that identity? What is the core identity? that you found in God? I think knowing that I'm his child and that he has a plan for me, he has a purpose for my life, that I'm not just here by some accident, but that, um, I love that. that he answer. is, mm -hmm. he's everything. And, you know, in whatever we go through in life, whatever we face, um, if we can have that foundation to know that God is with us and, um, and that he wants to use our life for his glory and that we can have an intimate relationship with him that is the, uh, that's the goal that's it. and it is doable yes I think for me it's the same thing too realizing that I'm not here per accident or I'm not just passing time yes. makes the world of a difference for me so I'm thankful that you have found that in the Lord. Yes. Yeah. And so, okay, so Jesus gave you your identity. How did you meet Jesus? Well, I um, <clears throat> I grew up in a home with my mom and my dad and my older sister. And my mom is a Christian yeah. and uh, has always been, you know, since I was born, the first one of the first places I went to was church. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so You're a church girl. Yes. Um, but my... Um, my dad is not a Christian, and he still is to this day, and so, um, um, but my, my growing up childhood was greatly influenced by my mom, and I went to church, but um, it was, um, I had experiences with God, obviously, going to church, but your question was, how did I really come mm -hmm. to know Jesus, and I think um, <clears throat> there were experiences all growing up, but there was definitely a point in my life when I really did come to know him when I was a teenager. I was about 13 or 14 years old. And um, and so um, I could share that, or yeah. do, you, do you want me yeah. to share that, or yeah. do you want me to even back up and tell a little bit about the story whenever yeah. I was uh, yes. almost died? that would be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've heard it, but I think you would bless other people as well. Um, well, um, <clears throat> I was about eight or nine years old, and um, my family was camping in the Ozark Mountains. And uh, my dad decided one day that he and my mom and my sister and one of her friends that was with us and, and I would go on an inner tubing ad adventure down Current River. And as I said, have said before, there's a reason why it's called the Current River. <laughs> it has, uh, it's, sometimes it's pretty calm and everything, but there had been a lot of rain at that time. And um, they told us at the rental place, you know, that it, the water was up and that there were some pretty rough spots in there. But, you know, the, it's kind of do it at your own risk. Okay. And, and oh, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the speakers. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, you saw other people doing it and it seemed like it would be safe enough. And so I remember that day feeling like um, in the pit of my stomach that something didn't feel right. And I was just nervous. And Before you... We, yes, but hmm. before we were going to, like, as we were getting ready to get in the inner tubes, and I remember telling my dad, you know, I just feel nervous about this. I just don't feel, I just feel 
this feeling that something maybe is going to be go wrong. Right. And um, and so, <clears throat> anyways, we went ahead with it, and um, and we were floating down the river, and and then um, I don't really know how much time passed. Things were going pretty smoothly, and at one point we got to this area, and we saw there was a bunch of brush, um, like branches and everything. We were it, the the river started getting really swift, and the current started getting you know really strong. Mm. And um, my dad says, well, everybody take your feet and try to, you know, push away from it. And so um, we did, but we were no match for the current. And, um, and we, all of our inner tubes slammed into this. It was kind of more, not right on the bank, but it was a little bit away from the bank. And we, we slammed into it, and it tore all of our inner tubes apart. And then kind of what happened next, it all happened in so fast but it almost is in slow motion in my mind and then some of the parts I remember of course was just how it affected me but then I remember how hearing how whatever happened to my sister and her friend and my mom and my dad and mm -hmm. so what happened uh, at, at that moment was uh, when we all it all busted our inner tubes apart you know tore them apart mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> my sister and her friend grabbed hold of these huge branches and they were able to push themselves up and they just kept pushing themselves up to get to, to above the water mm -hmm. and my mom grabbed hold of the bottom of it and was trying and I were, you know I, it, I was the smallest and then well, the youngest I was eight or nine okay. I can't remember exactly and um and I remember it I had a life jacket on but um it ended up it just sucked me under the water um and I remember feeling my mom's feet on top of my head and um, and a lot of times when people are in a, from what I understand, in a situation like that, and you go underwater, you get scared, and you, you know, and then that's a lot of times where people will take in water. And I was under uh, under the water, and I remember it was like I heard an audible voice tell me, "Breathe out." Mm -hmm. And I remember like slowly breathing my air out, and the water bubbles like I could feel them in front of my face. And um, and I think in that moment while I was under the water. It was that was the voice of God that yeah, helped me I not mean, to I think so. to in, inhale that water. Don't forget what you were saying. I think the Lord was stirring your your spirit from the very beginning to warn you that something wrong wrong could have happened. Mm -hmm. And you know what I find is that even when we don't, because you were a kid, you really didn't, didn't have that choice. Even when He warns us of things, and then we go still forwarded with whatever that situation was, he'll come and still rescue. Yes. Yes. And um, and so I remember like I was under there and it was like I just popped up out of the water. Like I remember I just felt like I shot up out of the water and and then it was like the, the current just took me away so fast. And um, and even though I was wearing a life jacket, it, it was almost like there were little whirlpools and everything, you know, and, and um I was being sucked under the water, and then I'd come back up and under the water and back up, and I was just fighting and fighting, you know, trying to stay above the water, and um, <clears throat> and so um, it very quickly it looked like the rest of my family were just so far away; they just looked like little specks, but I could still see them. I could make them out. I was trying to, you know, watch them. And not very far from where this happened, there was a sandbar in the in the river, and there was a family that had been canoeing, and um, they stopped to um, have lunch that day, and they saw what was happening to us, and so they came out in their canoe, and this one man did, and. Um, he went to my dad. My dad was not wearing a black jacket, and I forgot to say where my dad was. He got kind of swept out to the middle of the river, and there was another branch that my dad was trying to hold on to. It wasn't a log or anything. I mean, it was just this flimsy branch he was trying to hold on to. And even when you're a strong swimmer in conditions like that, you yeah. know, you can easily drown. And um, I said, I can still, this is an image that um, I can, that's always burned in my mind of my dad when this man came off of the um, sandbar to get him in the canoe. Um, I knew that I was worried for my life, of course, mm -hmm. but I was also so worried about my family and I was looking at my dad and I knew he didn't have a life jacket on and, and um, I still remember him and of course I couldn't hear him but I knew what he was saying and he kept swinging his arm to the man pointing in my direction mm -hmm. and I knew he was saying, go get her, go get her. And um, what does that, how does that relate to God's for love for humanity. 
Do you see a connection? Yes. Can you share that? Yes. I think because, you know, <clears throat> there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about how if our earthly father, you know, would, would take care of our needs, how much more will our heavenly father? And, um, and the love that um, my dad had for me as his child, that he risked his life for, for me. You know, um, he could have died that day. <laughs> and Jesus is, you know, he, he gave his life for us. And he did that as his great rescue plan for us so yeah. that, that we could be saved. And that's available to? To everybody. To everybody. Everybody. Who yeah. wants it. Yes. Right? Yes. So continue if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so um, they were still far away. And I didn't know if he would even make it because where I was, um, you know, I was so far away, I thought, well, can he even get to me because the way the water is, and, um, and so I was fighting, and, um, and, uh, I remember thinking that, in, well, I'd heard in church, you know, that you have to love Jesus, you have to love everybody, you can't make it to heaven with hate in your heart, and, and I, uh, I thought, well, I, I felt like I was, I was really going to die, mm-hmm. and, um, and I thought, well, what's going to happen? I want to make sure I go to heaven. And so I, um, I wanted my family to know I loved him. And so I, it sounds really funny, but I started yelling out. I said, I said goodbye, everybody. And I was trying to lift my hand up, you know. I said, goodbye. And I said, goodbye. I love you. I love you, world. I love you, everybody. I love you. I love you. Goodbye. And it's not <laughs> funny, but it shows your heart for the Lord. There is a love for the Lord. For, for the Lord in your heart that no matter what it is, your goal, your aim is to be with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And that's the heart. That's the goal, the heart of God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So like, God has blessed you with something from the very beginning, from a, you know, a young age. Yeah, I do feel like he's given me um, like a sensitivity and uh, a love for him. And I can see, looking back on my life, you know, that many times that he's had his hand on me. And... Um, and so, um, but in this in this moment, I was um, I felt you know like that this was the end for me here, and um, and so after I said that, um, I felt like I'd been struggling and fighting in the water and everything, and I just um, I felt a sense of just calmness come over me, and I thought instead of fighting, I just am going to let go, and I leaned back in the water as much as I could, and I just like lay back and the next thing I knew that man in the canoe had pulled up beside of me and had floated up beside of me. You know what I see when you let go? It just brings me back to when we life give us hardship. We fight, we fight, we fight trying to survive. And then when we let go and say, you know God, I'm just gonna give it to you. I'm gonna leave it in your hands. Yes. And there he'll come. And be who he is. Yes. And she's a rescuer. Yes. Of, among other things. Yes. Yes. And um, and that man, he pulled me in the boat, and uh, he told me he said, um, he says, I heard you. He said, I heard you saying that you um, that you loved everybody, and you were telling the world goodbye. And um, he says, and I want you to know that I love you too, and that Claude loves you too. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said, I wish to this day that I knew who that man was right. and um, his family because they, they saved my life that day. He mm-hmm. saved me. And I know that God used him. And um, and so um, that experience uh, definitely, as I look back on it in my life, I realized that God spared me that day because I know there are people that are involved in tragedies and that their life is not spared no. and God we don't understand all those things and I have wondered well God why did you save me that day that's it that's 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 the thing most people come to near death experience there is a reason that God gave you another chance mm-hmm. and I think anyone who if I were to be in that ex- situation I think the rest of my life should be spent trying to figure out why is it that you spare my life what is the purpose and what is the reason? Yes. And if you know, if there's anything I could ever, you know, my life could could be is to make a difference and to point people to the Lord, and and to realize that He can make your life worthwhile and He can He can save you. He can 
he can give you. Yeah, you can talk to that. I think. <laughs> Go ahead. What would you tell people? Well, that no matter how hopeless your life seems or or what you've gone through, that God is real. And maybe there's somebody out there listening right now that is wondering, I don't know why I am facing the things that I'm facing and why I'm going through what I'm going through because it just does not seem fair. But God is so real and He can be with you and He can comfort you. And he can help you through anything that you go through in life. He can help you through anything. I'm thankful that the Lord decided to save your life because when you were eight, I did not know you. But as you, when you got older and I moved to Kentucky, I got to know you. And you have impacted my life. You may not know it, but you have. The Lord saved you when you were Save your life, your natural life, when you were eight years old. And we did talk about how God saved us for a reason, for a purpose. And what is that purpose? So after you were uh, on shore, right? <laughs> out of the water. Mm -hmm. Out of the current water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what happened after that? Well, um, you know, I went on with my life, of course, and then I, I became a teenager. <laughs> and, uh, a teenager! A teenager, yes. <laughs> that time um, when a lot of children or young people, you know, start questioning their identity or trying to find who they are. And um, during that time, I, um, I experienced a lot of things in the world, um, and um, I wanted to just see what the world had to offer because it looked fun. and, and um, and, of course, we know that there are fun things in the world because it says that there are pleasures of sin mm -hmm. in the Bible. It says the pleasures of sin, but it says that they're only for a season. A season. And they don't, leave, they don't leave you with lasting happiness. And um, But uh, I wanted to experience things in the world, and so I did. And, um, and I was just going along with my life and having a good time. And um, there was one day, it was in April... Um, around this time of year. Can I just say I'm impressed by your memory <laughs> <laughs> and how you 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 know how to pinpoint the the pivotal moment of your life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, so I um, I was at church and uh, because I did, even though I was experiencing the world, I did continue to go to church. It was more like... Physically being there. But yes, my heart was not there. I was more doing it kind of out of an obligation to make my conscience feel better, but I didn't really participate. Um, I was just... Um, you were a church but, Yeah, I was a church <laughs> But I... Uh, I really had a bad Can you just say something about that? Is there a difference between being a church goer and being a Christian? I think there, are, there is. But I will say this. I do think that because I continue to go, and I tell people this sometimes, God can talk to you anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. Of course, we know that. But I do think because I continue to go, even when I didn't feel like it, that gave God more of an opportunity okay. to to speak to me. Okay. Because if I chose to stop going, um, he would have. It would not. There, I wouldn't been around other believers, okay. and God used another believer to okay. to um, to talk to me. And he could have done it another way, but I do. I do tell young people when I'm talking to them. Sometimes I say, even if you don't feel, and that's your ministry as well. You do. You meet, you work with young people as well. Well, we do. Yes, we yeah, do. That's one of your ministries. <laughs> and. Um, and we uh, and I and I will tell them I will say you know uh, if you don't feel like being at church you know just keep coming just keep keep coming because it gives the Lord more of an opportunity to work with your heart and you might hear something one day you may be a million miles away in your mind but there might be somebody there one day that or a song or a testimony that will get your that attention, get your attention. and um, but yes, there definitely is a difference between going to church. You should and not be satisfied with just going to, to church. church. You keep seeking. Yes, yes. There is so much more and and being an active participant. But that all starts in your heart, you right. know, and, and, mm -hmm. and let God deal with your heart. And um, and so I um, um, 
this one day in particular, it was on a Sunday morning, and one of my friends from a, another church mm -hmm. came to visit, and she told me that a young man from the church she was attending had had a dream about him. And in this dream, and this young man also was not, he was also going to church, but not really serving the Lord. And um, in this dream, he said that he and a group of other young people were on this bus, and they were all sitting on one side of the bus, and they were laughing and having a great time, and um, just uh, enjoying the ride. Mm -hmm. And he says, but you were on the other side, and you were sitting in the back, all by yourself, and you were sad and really quiet, and the bus was in hell. And uh, when she told me that, I don't know really how to explain what happened in my heart, but um, it was just like a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. And I realized that the choices that I had been making and uh, the lifestyle that I had been living was going to lead to destruction, mm -hmm. and um, it was going to lead me down a pathway that was not where I wanted to be, and also um, that I wasn't really truly happy, that showed me it, that um, I was seeking for happiness, but I was not inside, I was not truly happy. I think it also showed that you did not belong in the world. Yeah. The other people were enjoying it, perhaps they belong, I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying everyone mm -hmm. is belong, but you were one of a kind. That was not your place, even in the world, it wasn't your place to be. It was yes. just so that you were set apart, that God showed you you don't belong. Yes. Even there, you by yourself, you're not really enjoying it. Right. Yeah. And uh, and so, it, during that service, um, I, um, and I had experiences with God prior to this, but um, I remember, I don't even know what songs were played or anything, but I just remember that I, it was like I couldn't get down to the altar fast enough. And I remember kneeling at the altar and having a true repentance experience where I, I asked the Lord, forgive me. And there's something so beautiful about having that experience. You know, because we're all born in sin, we all are born under the curse of Adam and we all need Jesus. Yeah. And um, and but in that moment, um, I felt the weight of all the choices that I had been making, and the guilt that I felt for the things that I had been doing that I knew were wrong, and I felt Him lift them off of me, and I felt the weight of sin, and I felt His forgiveness, and I felt His acceptance that He loved me, and um, that was a pivotal pivotal turning point in my life, and. Um, I was going to, um, I was in middle school at that time, which is a really hard time, you know, for yeah. kids. Um, <clears throat> and um, I was getting ready that next year, I would have been going into high school. And I remember that, um, you know, I had had a certain reputation at school, you know, I, I hung around with people. The cool people. The cool people, you know. <laughs> and I, was, I remember, you know, thinking, like, when I was praying after I had this experience, I said, but God, I said, I don't know how to change overnight. I don't know how to change my, like, you know, and it wasn't just the outward appearance, but it was like, how do I, that was definitely part of it, but it was like, not just my outward appearance, but just, how do you change like that? And God, you know, the great thing about God is that he doesn't like demand you need to just, you know, like be this person overnight. He gives us patience. It's my like, way. He, it's not like it's my way to have it. Yes, like he works with us, you know, and it's like you just take one step, you know, just take a step at a time. And um, and I, that was a huge step for me that day. And I said, Lord, can you just help me? Like, I want to finish the school year out. And, and this summer, I'm really going to make changes in my life where I want to, um, I really want to, I, I made a vow to the Lord that day that I was going to change my life. And, um, and so the rest of that school year, which I said that was in April, the end, like middle to end of April when this happened, and um, school would be getting out like the, the end of May. And so, um, I, you know, at the end of May when school got out, it was like the Lord brought that back to my mind, you know, that, that I had made that vow to Him. And not that I'd forgotten about right. it, but it, it was like I'm I more pressing. Yes, it became more pressing in my heart. And, um, and so that summer, I started making choices that um, led me um, 
to get closer to the Lord, and I uh, had to, you know, make some choices about the people that I hung around with uh, because that were influencing me, and um, and I had to. Uh, the Lord gave me good friends that were were Christians and that that um, thought were following Him, and um, that I was able to spend some time with. And uh, but I started making those changes, and you know, as I've said, I uh, it doesn't mean that I was. You know, had it all figured out at that point. That. <laughs> I'm still figuring it out, and um, and I, um, you know, I, I made mistakes after that, wrong choices. But I said the, the best way I know to describe it is that was like from that day forward, it was like my face became set like a flint, mm-hmm. and I knew that I wanted to live my life for the Lord, and um, and He changed my life completely, and um, and He He gave my life a purpose. And after that, I know I, I have an idea <laughs> of who Jesus would be to you, right? After all of this experience, after being 13 and now you, I think your mom, your mom and a, a wife yes. and everything. So he has been with you through this moment, even though you said you made mistakes during that journey. We know Jesus is. The Son of God, and only yes. through Him, right? Only that you him. can be saved. Yes. But who do you find that Jesus is for you on a personal level? Well, He, um, I think in my life, the, the way that I describe it is that it's like He affects everything because He, I'm trying to make Him my everything, <laughs> you know, but it's like I, He's the starting point. Okay. And, um, and then, based on him and his principles in the word, I try to um, make my decisions in my life based off of that. And and um, he's everything. He is my best friend. You know, um, I can talk to him about anything. Yeah. And um, he is the one that um, comforts me when I um, am sad. And he is. Um, He's the lover of my soul. <laughs> Who can Jesus be to people who are watching if they're going through a hard situation? What do you tell them about your Jesus? That he's the answer. He is the answer. And for it's me. not just a cliche. It's not. It's not. Whatever questions that you have, whatever situations you're dealing with, whatever, if you're trying to find a purpose in your life, you know, they're trying to find the meaning to your life. Why am I here? Why is everybody here? What is life all about? Does Jesus promise an, uh, an easy road? No, he doesn't promise that it will be easy. But we have a choice. Life is going to have struggles whether we serve the Lord or not. Yes. yes. So we can either choose to try to face them on our own and handle them in our own way. And fail. Yes, right. And Or we can, can go through them with God. And no, it won't be easy all the time. But it will be worth it. And and he does make the pathway easier because he's with us. Mm-hmm. You know, the um, the struggles that we face, the things that we go through, they are, um, the load's not as hard when you know that he's helping you carry the load. And that he's walking beside you every step of the way. You know, um, that just to know that we're not alone in this world. Yeah. You're not alone. You know, and that there's a God that loves you. And he's reaching out and he's calling you and he knows your name. He knows. And he wants to save us. He wants to save us from ourselves. And that he has so much, so much to give us. And it's all because of love. Yes. He wants this. Can you imagine <laughs> someone love you, you don't have anything to give? Yes. Even when you're a mess, when I'm a mess, he loves. Yes. And wants to make you the best. Yes. That's beautiful. And so we know through the struggles, through the pains, He does leave us with comfort. Yes. And one of them is the Holy Spirit. He also gives us the Word, mm-hmm. the Bible. Do you have a favorite scripture or go-to scripture that you go to? Oh, <laughs> wow. You didn't see that coming? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think, I have many scriptures that I do love. Um, but I do think that I um, really love Romans eight twenty eight. That's 
why. <laughs> <laughs> because it says, For we know that all things work together for the good to them who are the called according to Christ Jesus. That's yeah. how it says it. Um, in Christ Jesus. And, um, and so um, I think that if we can look at our circumstances in our lives, whatever it is, you know, I have faced some difficulties in life, but I know they're not compared to what some of people maybe out here are listening to right now. Um, death, possibly, of a loved one. And, um, you know, I can't make sense of everything that happens in life. But I know that God gave us that promise in, in the scripture that all things can work together for his good. And we may not see the good, we may not understand it, but that God can work in every circumstance. And there's a, um, a song that I love. It says that God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when we don't understand and when we can't see his plan, when we can't trace his hand, trust. And his heart is love for us. It is love. love. I love it. You just ministered to me. <laughs> <laughs> it is love. It just it is a comfort in that scripture, that Bible verse. All of it. You can't go wrong with God. Yeah. There is no impossible in God's hands. There is no mess in God's hands. When it's in his hand, he will work it out for your good. And we really can trust him. Yeah. We really can trust Him. We don't have to try to figure it all out ourselves. Yeah. We can just go to Him for guidance and know that when we lay it in His hands, our life in His hands, that He can work things out in ways that we can't. Yeah. And he sees things that we can't see because His ways are higher than our ways. Yes. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. So, you know, this is the living episode for Adam, right? Yes. I'm bound to ask this question. <laughs> okay. What does it mean to be a living epistle if you have an understanding of it? Well, I mean, an epistle is a letter, right? Written, you know, in a living epistle, that term is used in the Bible. And so when I hear that, I think that my life is a letter that people can read. And when they read it, we want them to read not us. It's not about us. Yes. No. But if our lives and experiences and everything that we go through, if it can be a letter that someone can read that can point them to Jesus. I love that. And who inspires you? Inspires you. Who inspires me? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many people that inspire me. You know, I do tend to, um, I'm a deep thinker, I'd love mm -hmm. to seek the truth, and so I, I tend to gravitate, you know, towards... Um, that are deep thinkers. My <laughs> one is an inspiration to me. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that. Because she's she my friend. <laughs> she is. Praise God. Um, Praise God. But, um, um, people that are inspiration to me. Wow. Are you going to be able to edit it this part? Okay. <laughs> well, pretty, she but... wants me to edit it, but I probably will not. <laughs> <laughs> there are That's the candid moment of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this. There, uh, there are so many people that inspire me. I mean, like, the, the person that's behind the camera, Rachel. Um, oh, she does, she does inspire me. Yeah. Yes. And probably, she probably doesn't want us to say this, but she does. <laughs> she does, and her, her mom, but her family. Well, my mom is an inspiration to me, of course. And, um, but like, Rachel and her mom, uh, they were um, big influences in my life. Still are, um, and uh, are, are inspirations to me. And also... Um, our uh, the pastor's wife, uh, the church that I go to, she passed away, mm -hmm. and um, but she was definitely an inspiration to me as well. She was just someone that loved God with all of her heart. She gave her life to God. Her her um, she her whole when you were around her, you just could tell that she loved God. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've said before, it's amazing when 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 people love Jesus, you see it. You can just see yeah. it. And, and it makes you thirsty yes. for more. Yes. Yes, it does. And so if all of us can represent Jesus as those people, we won't have to shout. We won't have to say things. Our lifestyle, the way we live, yes. will attract people to the Lord. Yes, because I think they can see that, that we have 
a piece about us. That there's so much turmoil going on in this world, but we can have a peace because we know we have Him, and people can see that. Because people are looking for peace. I think people are looking for answers. I they are, so. and 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 the answer is here. Yeah. It is here. When I say it's here for us, because Jesus is here. Jesus is the answer. Yes. Is there anything that you think? you want to share anything else it does you don't have to but if you feel the leading right now to share anything you have to walk. Mm. just not to give up hope I went through a difficult um, period in my life and maybe um, another time we will be able to okay. share that um, but I remember I had this word you know um, it was on my wall um, that I had, and I, I strategically placed it when I was going through a difficult time, and uh, the word is hope, and I would wake up in the morning, and um, I would open my eyes, and I would see that word hope, because this moment in my life that I will share maybe later on, um, I, I didn't feel like maybe that there was hope, and I was struggling to find the hope, and, um, and so if there's something that I could say, when I would see that word, I would remember my hope is in the Lord, and um, and that He He can bring me through anything. And so, if there's anybody that's listening right now and watching this and wondering, is there is there hope for me? Is there hope for my situation? There yeah. is. And I think when I was going through a hard time, and it was hard, and I didn't like the fact that I it wasn't easy for me. What what I mean is that I was wrestling with the Lord in a way. I wasn't just yielding as easily, and I think I was sharing a conversation with you, and you probably don't remember. And I said, it's so hard, and I feel bad about it. My attitude toward the Lord is not that great, and I think you said this. Well, it would not be a test if it was easy. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, you said something to that effect. It would not be a test if it was not, if it was easy. And... I don't know why I share that, but I think it's profound. So thank you so much, Gilly Jill, <laughs> for sharing. And I thank God for you. People like you make it comforting, and it's kind of like a flame to fend the hope that is within, so we can keep pursuing the Lord, the journey that the Lord gives us. So I thank God for you. Thank you for sharing. And I pray that you were blessed through this project, through, through her testimony, actually. And the Lord is here for you. It's not, there is no hidden agenda. If it was up to us, we probably would not care to share anything with you. But the Lord, the love of the Lord has opened our heart and commend us to share and he actually give us a heart to want to share the love of the Lord to you. There is hope and it is in Jesus. So try him and you will see that he is good. Until next time.